parts in one body. You got to have one heart. And please pay attention to what I'm going to explain next. Because this will align, align you further in terms of who you are as a person in your own conduct. When you are moving in this world, do you have one face, one language, one truth? Are you like that? Or are you a person? One second, you're in this corner. And the next second, the temptation calls you. And you're like, what? It's okay. It's all right. You know, one day, one mistake. It's okay. Not a big deal. And you start rationalizing your principles in your own head. And you start saying, you know what? It's all right. It's fine. I can do it. Not a problem. It's not affecting me. Not a big deal. That's how you lie to yourself. Some of us, we train our conscience to do that. You are actually training your conscience to do that. When you need your conscience and you don't have time to think when a decision comes up and you don't have time to think, your conscience is going to come. And you want to see who you really are? See when you don't have time to think and you have to react. See how you built your conscience. That's how you test yourself. You have to react to something and you don't have the time? Watch what thoughts come to your mind and please study those thoughts. Study them. That's the real you. You can't lie to yourself at that moment. You don't have time to think. Some of us, we train our conscience to do what? Become our own personal liar. To who? To me. It lies to me. And some of us, no, we hold on. We're strong in what we have. And when that conscience comes, it says, no. Don't do it. And the heart feels different. It moves to a different rhythm. That's how the heart moves. You're connected properly. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves those who are what? Giving. Now you might think, what does this have to do with music? I haven't touched anything on music. We're getting there. But you got to understand, your heart is the center of decision making. And it connects to things. And what? It rejects things. So ultimately, there's a language there as well. And I'm going to take you through a little journey in terms of who you are. I'm going to take you through a little journey of who you are and where the heart sits and what feelings should you have in your heart. Is your heart connected to that song or is it connected to the Quran? What sound hits your ear that hits your heart and moves it in a different way? What triggers you as a person? Do you long that when you hear the Quran, that your heart is connected to it. You long for it. It's not hard to test yourself. I'm telling you, it's not. Look at your own emotions and where you're at and see. See what happens. See what happens where you're at. When you hear that song, when you're about to get in your written car and you just, you have to turn on the song. And some of us, we drive around the what? You're coming home and you drive around the block. Just to finish what? Just to finish the song. It's so good. Come on. Got to hear this part. Right? See, I see the smiles. That's you. It's all good. I'm not telling you not to listen. It's up to you at the end of the day. I'm up here trying to save myself. I'm not trying to save you. Believe me. I'm trying to save myself. I have my own problems. I have my own issues I have to deal with. But as you grow in responsibility, more weight you got to take on. That means that up here you have to be 10 times stronger. You have less time to make a certain decision that has a lot of responsibility loaded on top of it. 
That's leadership. You are the captain of your own soul. You know how much responsibility that is? But the value of that, Imam Ali alayhi salam, says the value of your own soul, the only thing you should trade it with is heaven. Wow. And some of us, we want to walk around, to just conform to social regulations. Kiki, mashallah. I, I just, I'm sorry. You guys remember the one before that? Do you guys remember what? What was that one? Anybody know? What is it? Watch me what? See? You guys remember that one? You think these things are just accidents? You think they're accidents? You don't think they have marketers working on this stuff night and day to rob real estate in your own mind that you can bring up a song at will? What does that mean, Nene? What does that mean? Anybody know? Okay, movement, right? Move this way like an idiot. That's what I'm telling you to do. And you know how many millions follow? Imam Ali says, Hamajun Ru'a. They're like sheep. They follow whatever is set. They follow laws of what? Social regulation. Unwritten laws. I can define the way I want. I live the way I want. It doesn't matter. So, Kiki comes across and you have millions and millions of people just willing to do the most irrational things. And wow, it catches where? Where do they hook you? Where? Here. That's where you get hooked. Because it feels good. They know how to trigger that. That's the key. Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. He says, don't let something enter your ear and go straight to your heart. Wow. That's profound. If you really think about that, that's profound. Again, I haven't talked about music too much. I'm just letting you know it's about this. It's what this gets hooked to. And when you tell me it doesn't affect me, Come talk to me. I want to talk to you just for five minutes. And if I don't destroy that concept, then I will bow down to whatever you're listening to. I will listen to it with you. We can dance and do whatever you want. All the stupid, idiotic moves that you want to do. By the way, you want to try something really funny? Next time you're hearing something like music on the radio or whatever, or you're watching a music video, mute the sound for a second. Look how they look. Would you ever walk down the street just doing that? Some people actually do. Now, I'm not, listen, again, I'm not telling you not to listen. It's up to you. At the end of the day, it's you. You do what you want. No one can tell you no. Don't do that. I can just advise you. Because there's certain regulations that you have to go through in your own heart. You have to. You gotta master this thing. And by the way, in Arabic, you know what the word qalb means? Anybody know? There's, there's multiple meanings. The thing that what? Flips. Subhanallah. I want to challenge you. For one day, from the first second you wake up to the last minute when you go to sleep, try to maintain one single emotion in your heart. Just do it for one day. Heck, 
Forget the day. One hour. You think you're so strong? Not one hour. Ten minutes. This thing is constantly flipping. It's constantly flipping. Like when you get in sujood and you ask Allah, Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. What? Make my heart submit to what? Your religion. That's not easy. The longest journey that you will ever have to win in terms of a race is between here and here. That's the longest journey of your life. To take this and have it what? Take over this. That's the longest journey you will ever have. That's your true battle in life. Then nothing, nothing in this world is worth more than what? This thing. And guess what? They know how to grab it and flip it better than you do. So when Kiki comes around, guess what? What's happening here? Kiki, Kiki. Habibi, Aini, what's wrong with you? I gotta move. I gotta move. I have to. And you know what really disturbs me? And this is what really gets to my heart. Is when you see a father or a mother and you see a kid who's doing these things. That's disturbing. And I'm not telling you not to have fun with your kids. I'm not. Believe me. But you got to understand the dangers of what you're doing. And I'm going to take you through. Believe me. Now, we said there are people who do what? They buy the amusement of speech. That means they can articulate very well. To bring and to move people from the way of Allah. Now, here's what I want to give you. And really pay attention to this statistic. 95% 95% of songs, 95% of songs are about courtship. 95% of lyrics are about what? Courtship. The interaction between a man and a woman. I would ask you why. Why would that be the case? Why? Think about it. If you don't think that's marketing at a whole other level, then you've been fooled. You have no idea. What's in here is hitting here. And you're being programmed whether you like it or not. And I want to give you a concept. Please pay attention to this. So there are people who are going to send you what? Messages. Music is one of the most powerful ways to send messages. It's rhythmic. It has multiple languages embedded in it, and I will explain the way that works. There's multiple languages working on you at one time. I'm going to explain those languages. It's very powerful. That you want to remember something, make it rhythmic. It's been scientifically proven. You want to remember something? Make it rhythmic. You'll remember it more. Wow. Got you. Put a nice beat behind it. Man. It hits your ear. It hits your heart. You're just, as they say, tired. You're like in another world. If you're, if you're like, I go with the sisters here for a second. Turn on the music. What happens? She's driving, right? Let's go. She's driving. She's upset. Turn on the music. Now, all of a sudden, I see a smile on my face. I look in the mirror. She's smiling. Now, what happens? I go into imaginary mode. I go into fantasy land. And I see him 
coming over white. And I'm going with the song. And I see him coming with a white horse. And he's going right over the mountain. And he's actually in armor. And he pulls out his sword. And he says, Zainab. See what I'm... Like, you, you literally go to where? Where do you go? Then you're about to... Well, she slams on the brakes. She's about to go through a red light. That's where it takes you, though. It removes you away. It's a distraction. Here are the four languages really quickly. So now, we have four ways of communicating at one time. And I'll give you a quick example and I'll move on. Okay? You have verbal, behavioral, emotional, and dress. Four different ways of communication simultaneously. They're working on you right now. So watch this. My hands are actually moving to my voice. You see my, the way my hands are moving? They're literally moving. They're dancing to my voice. They're in sync. If that's not in sync, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to be sending you mixed messages. That will make me an awful presenter. But I imagine I do that at will, and I can. I can literally send you multiple messages in one statement. I've learned how to do that. So the verbal, behavioral, emotional, and dress. I'll give you a quick example, and again, we'll move on. I said, come up to you, and I ask you, forget that. Go to a nun. Subhanallah, the other day, I saw a nun passing by here. She was just passing, she was crossing the street. And I saw a sister of our community, who wasn't wearing the hijab. She was also crossing the street. I said, what a picture. Subhanallah. It's incredible. You see the hijab on one person, but you don't see it on the other. I'm not judging. Everybody can do what they want. I told you, I'm up here trying to save myself. Doesn't matter. You want to put on the hijab, it's up to you. You don't want to put it on, it's up to you. At the end of the day, you're going to have to deal with that. Nobody else. Nobody else is going to hold your weight. No one. It's on your shoulders. It's up to you. So, we're not up here trying to tell you what? Do this and do that. It's, at the end of the day, the Prophet was a warner. That's all he was. In the Quran, read. He was just a warner. So from here, if you see a sister, or forget the sister, go to the nun. Her garb says what? Modesty. Don't speak with what? An ill tongue. Then you turn around and she's swearing. Or she's listening to music. She's dancing. So I want you to think of some of our sisters. And I'm not passing judgment at all. It's up to you. I'm stating the facts of what reality is. Accept it. Accept the fact of what it is. Do not lie to yourself. I'm not up here trying to lie to you. Accept it. Say, I choose not to do that. But accept the fact. Accept it. Don't try to fight it. Say it's not in the Quran. Don't do that. You don't have weight in terms of knowledge for you to say and give your own opinion about the Quran and what it says. You don't. When it comes down to deducing law from the Quran, none of us in here have that. None of us. Would you go take a pill, a random pill from someone? Would you do that? Why do you do that with your own soul? Why do you give your own opinion about certain things that you have no knowledge over? Why do you do that? Don't have the audacity to do something like that. Don't. If you want to take a small little pill that will affect you in ways you don't know, guess what? Certain things, that certain opinions that you have may be affecting you in the same way. So now, two languages. The dress language is telling you one thing. But what? Her verbal language is contradicting at the same exact time. See how you send mixed messages? And now, 
what I told you about earlier. When I see a father dancing with a small little daughter, teaching her these things. My God. You give kids mixed messages, they will come after you. They will eventually destroy you. If you give kids inconsistent messages, they will destroy you. Because you created confusion. Today you tell them, Kiki, tomorrow, Quran, MashaAllah. We said there's no two hearts in one body. You're programming the heart. Understand that. You're programming emotions. Don't think it's light to put on a song. Don't. The minute you turn that knob, understand what you're doing. Understand that. You're programming the heart. You're tuning it in to certain frequencies. If it connects to the Quran, good for you. Some of us can relay the Quran with the tongue easily. Man, subhanallah. But also, when you feel it inside your heart, it's incredible what happens to this and how it starts to speak. It's incredible. So where? The center of emotion is where? Where? Here. Ala bithikrillah. Tatma'innul God, if we just read, just read, Allah, just read, just contemplate about the Quran. Live with it. Study it. Surely with the remembrance of who? Who? Allah. The heart becomes tranquil. So ultimately, when you want to program the heart, do you want to program it to Kiki or the Quran? When Allah is telling you, surely with my remembrance, your heart will become sound. It will become happy. It's not with the wrong things. You can program your heart and think that you're going to get yourself to the next level. Now really pay attention to this. And I'm going to repeat it. Don't do the things you don't want to become. I'm going to repeat what I just said. Don't do the things you don't want to become. I can give you a whole presentation on that in terms of how your neural networks connect. I'm not going to do that. What you are doing, you will become. And if you don't like what you're doing, Guess what? You're not going to like the person in the future you're creating now. That's what happens. So when you hit the club and you're dancing around like an idiot, do it. It's up to you. No one's going to stop you. But understand the implications of that and what you're doing. Now, when you program your own heart and you get yourself to the next level, what happens? Imagine you connect it to the right things. You connect it, it's proper. Now you have four languages, correct? We said. Imagine when you speak, you speak the Quran. When you behave, you behave in accordance to the Quran. And when you feel, really pay attention, please. When you feel, you feel what the Quran wants. And what the Qur'an rejects. Is that a choice? Is that choice? Do you have choice? Do you tell the Qur'an of what you want? Or does the Qur'an tell you what you should do? The Qur'an tells us what to do. The Qur'an gives us what we need. But some of us would become so brave 
that we want to instill our own what? Rules and regulations. We think we can bring ourselves to happiness. There's no two hearts in one body. One heart, one body. You get to program it. So what I always tell parents, don't just tell your kids how to think. Teach them how to feel. Teach them how to feel. Because a principle is two things. A thought immersed in emotion. That's how it connects to your heart. The thought has to infuse here. And once it connects, wow. So if it connects to Kiki, and again, the Quran, it's up to you. It's up to you. No one's going to be sitting there with you. Imam Hussein was alone in the land of Karbala. Last, by himself. Guess what? You're going to be in the same position. Whether you like it or not. It's coming. No one, mama's not going to hold your hand. Baba who taught you the dance moves, he's not going to be holding your hand. That's what happens. Now, from there, I want to give you another concept. And please, understand this. The next time, you're going to make a choice. This is how you program the heart now. So from there, you have a choice. Number one, you have Kiki in this corner. So the battle is going to ensue. And who's going to win? Let's see. All right? Salah ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I want to show you how you program yourself with something called dopamine. All right? So this is what happens. In the right corner, we have Kiki. MashaAllah. How many, how many views? How would you say on one video? Can anybody tell me? Somebody look it up, please. How many views is on like the Kiki sound, the video? So, MashaAllah. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Seven million views. I think it's a lot more than that. Yeah, something like that. It's crazy. What is it? One hundred and three million. What else? I'm sure. Sure, even more than that, guys. These guys are artists in how they do it. They understand. Believe me. So from there, if you look at a like ayah from the Quran, you get maybe thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty, maybe a hundred. Maybe 200. It can't compete. So it should tell you something. We have numbers. We have data. It's live. It's in front of you. There's other songs that are just crazy what they've hit. It's just incredible. So now, Kiki is in one corner and the Quran is in the other. And you know what they're fighting for? You know what the prize is? They love you both. Both of them love you. They're looking for what? They want a home. You know where they want to go? They want to move where? They want to move in here. No, it's up to you. You can close the door on one and invite it in. Or what? You can close the door on the Quran. It's up to you. Now what happens? Kiki comes in. Quran. And now the battle's going. And this is your what? Imagine this. Watch this with me. You get in your car. This is the battle. And now your system is automatic. Your hand just starts moving towards the radio on its own. What are you going to pick? Or now you're just scrolling with your phone. Which one are you going to pick? And bam. Kiki wins. I'm just kidding. Hopefully it's the Quran. But from there, what happens? It's up to you. You know what happens when two competing thoughts actually going against each other? You know what happens? Whichever thought wins, meaning whatever you choose, 
becomes stronger. And whatever you choose, whatever you didn't choose, you know what happens? Becomes weaker. So every choice you make, you're actually hardwiring yourself. Every single choice. This is what happens. They connect. Your neurons connect at a different level. Why? Because whatever you inject in terms of that, so let's say you pick, Allah, Kiki. Kiki now is becoming stronger in your system. It actually gets to a point where music has its own personality inside your system. Good luck trying to cut off the craving. Good luck. Once you create these things, they're not going anywhere. That's becoming you, whether you like it or not. It's becoming you. Now, I want to finish with this. Here's what you're doing. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. From here, there's two things in life, literally. And I'm going to show you the effects of it now. So today, inshallah, you now you understood that you're programming this. You're programming your emotions. That's one thing. So if you think it doesn't affect you, good luck. You can still stay with that rationalization all you want. It doesn't affect me. What's wrong with you? But why do you pray? With khushua. Why? Because a prayer without khushua is mechanical. Meaning what? The heart is connected. The first law is hudurul qalb. You have a presence of heart. You're looking for an emotion in salah. Right? Guess what? You're doing the same thing in music. You're looking for an emotion. And this is how it works. With music. Music is actually a coping mechanism. People to deal with problems, they actually use music. It's actually in the same line with drugs, alcohol, cocaine, all things. It's in that line. So on that factor, what happens? Some of us, when we get in my car and we hit the kiki button, because life sucks, and man, I can't deal with this. There's two things. Problem coping and what? Emotional coping. Two things in psychology. Number one, emotional coping is when someone wants to vent. Someone just wants to what? Life, I can't deal with this. They pick up the phone. You know what he did to me? They go off. And the worst thing is when this happens, sisters and guys, I'll tell you this. Inshallah, some of you who are married, please pay attention. We're, if you're not married, take some notes. Okay? Watch this. This is what happens with these kinds of things. She gets on the phone. She's like, I can't believe this, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. This happened. She just wants to what? Vent. That's all she wants to do. Women are like that. The, the, the emotional level, they just want to vent. Men are what? Problem solvers. This is how you confuse us, by the way, okay? So, but guys, please, this is to give you some insight. It will save you a lot of headache down the line. Pay attention. <laughs> Believe me. Okay, from there. Now, he's on the phone, he's like, and he's listening, he's confused. He doesn't know where to go. Because he's dealing with the emotion, but he's also dealing with what? He's trying to solve the problem for her. And he's like, okay. Then he's like this. And every once in a while, he just interjects. And he says what? Okay, do this, do this. Is that? You're not listening to me. The guy's like, what? Huh? He's in problem solving mode. He's problem coping. She's in what? Emotional. The worst thing you can do to someone who's emotionally coping is give them advice logically. 
Guys, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm telling you, this thought is very expensive. And you're going to pay for it if you don't learn it now. And I'll show you how thoughts, you want me to give you an example of how thoughts can be very expensive? Here's one thing. Okay, I'll give you an example. One guy I'm coaching. I do a lot of professional coaching in terms of business and other things. But from there, I'm coaching him. I said, if you want me to coach you, you're going to have to quit smoking for three months. And it starts now. He's like, what? I said, yes or no, or I'm going to hang up the phone. He's like, okay. He agreed. Three months later, I give him a call. He stopped for three months. Cold turkey. I said, you owe me a lot of money. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I sold you a thought. He's like, huh? I said, I want you to calculate something for me. I said, each day, how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke? He's like, seven. He says, one pack. I said, calculate that. How much is that? He's like, seven dollars. I said, great. Calculate that by seven days. It's like, that's 49. It's like, great. Four weeks, that's almost $200. Multiply that by what? Three months? It says, 600 bucks. It says, you owe me $600. I sold you a thought. You don't think this way. So now what happens? She's on the phone, and she's coping. And from there, I'm going to give you an example of which one sits where. Where does the music sit? Where does the Quran sit? He's talking, and she's talking, and she's talking, and she's talking. And he's just listening, and he's like, what am I dealing with? I, give you, I tell you what to do, and you're like, you're not listening to me. She's just in a different zone. And guys do that too. I'm not saying... They don't. But mostly, it's on the other side. So emotional coping is when someone is venting. They don't want what? They don't want an answer. They don't. So they turn on what? Kiki. Now, what happens to the person who turns on the Quran? Do you want, it deals with the, to both things. It calms you down. It deals with your emotions. Subhanallah. If you just think about what I just said, that should you make your hair stand up. So it gives you the calmness that you need to deal with the problem. But then it engages this. When these turn off, you know what happens? This turns on. And now you start thinking about the problem. And you actually start solving it. Look at the difference. This, in terms of, doesn't give you an answer. You know what it does? It distracts you for a moment in time. Now, pay attention. When someone sells you a thought, I just sold that guy a thought, correct? That was a good thought for him. But when someone sells you, as we started with that, with the Quran, لَهُوَ hadith. They buy what? The amusement of speech to push you away. They just stole a time in your life for three to five to half hour. Calculate that. How many thoughts they just stole? It's up to you. The end of the day. It's all up to you. So from there, once you understand that, that your thoughts have value, you can give them to Kiki or you can listen to the Quran. You can make your heart tranquil and you can get your answer. Or you can distract yourself for a moment and lose that time if you choose to. It's up to you. Where do you want to be? That's how it works. So, for me, Alhamdulillah, I grew up in this beautiful community. It's amazing. I love this community. Everybody wants to be like us. Believe me. 
Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, everybody talks about us. I've been everywhere. I'll be in Seattle in a couple weeks. I was just at a conference in the Dominican Republic. Okay? So I do both ends of business and also what? And this. So ultimately, believe me, everybody wants to come here. Not for certain things, but we have, we have a persona. So ultimately, if we have this big kind of noise that we make, hold on to your identity. Program this thing properly. And get yourself to where you need to be. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, people are going to be looking at you. Bottom line. And if you have on the hijab, please be careful. Please. Please. Do you know why? Think about those four languages. If you put on the hijab, what are you saying to the world? Let's sisters, really quickly, and I'll finish with this. What are you saying to the world when you put on the hijab? You're presenting Islam. I've been in situations. Two sisters. One shakes, one doesn't. Same exact time. You know what kind of confusion that creates? Do you see what I'm saying? You are a flag because you wear the dress language. We don't have the dress language. We don't. Maybe a beard, but beards are in now, so we're safe. Everybody has a beard. We're not looked at like you guys are, or you ladies are. So from there, you have the dress language. And give me some things underneath the dress language, really quickly. Give me some things. What are some qualifications? Is it listening to music, one of them? MashaAllah, that's awesome. Going dancing, number two. Why not? Are these the qualifications of the hijab? Let me ask you this. MashaAllah, we're the best. I say Dearborn gets officially put on the map as the center of Islam. And tomorrow, hypothetically, I'm speaking, okay, we're not there. Tomorrow, we get what? An invitation that Jibra'il came down, and now the Prophet ﷺ is going to come visit Dearborn. Now, if it was there, we would actually claim it. We're so pious, mashallah. <laughs> so from there, now the Prophet is with us, right? And tomorrow... Zainab is going to have a wedding, right? Who's the first person you're going to invite? Astaghfirullah. Over the Prophet, come on. <laughs> so the Prophet, you get there and you're like, man, okay, we got to invite the Prophet, right? First thing, would you write that invitation? Mama, it's my day. I got to wear the dress. And if there's not 40 drummers there and the dapke going, how am I going to do this? Would your heart be conflicted? Would it be? Think. Would you write that invitation to the Prophet and say, Ya Rasulullah, come. Be honest with your own heart. Be honest with yourself. No one has to tell you these things. Be honest. Be real with this thing. Don't become a professional liar to yourself. Say, you know what? Of course, I'll do it. Anyone who comes, but he's not here. Khalas, I'm not going to do it. Ultimately. So under, underneath that, give me some qualifications, please. Really quickly. Give me some qualifications underneath the hijab. Go ahead. Humility, beautiful. What else? <clears throat> I'm sorry? Modesty. Oh, that's a big one. Modesty? What are you talking about? Go ahead. Akhlaq, mashallah. Shyness. Wow. 
So are you going to go dancing if you're shy? Let's think about that one. Go ahead, sister. I'm sorry? Dignity. Beautiful. See how everything... Go ahead. The way you walk. Behavior. What else? What is it? Mannerism. Beautiful. Purity. Wow, mashallah. Look at all these beautiful qualities. And all you have to do is put on what? What do you have to put on? You put on a little thing, a towel around your head as they call it, right? They call it towels, right? And you get all these qualifications. Go ahead. You're, you're beautifully put. There's the external hijab and the internal hijab. Two different things. You have to carry both. You have to. I'm not going to talk about that any further. Guys, you have your own hijab. And I know your problems. And you guys have a lot of them. Okay? But I'm talking about here in terms of this, that dress. And I'm not picking on the sisters. Both sides have hijab. Believe me. The way Allah has constructed things is beautiful. It's beautifully put for men and women. There are double standards, but there are good double standards. I'm not talking about the negative double standards. For a woman and a man. For me, when a woman comes, and I, I'm literally, in one of my positions, I'm the VP of business development. So from there, and it's all what? Non-Muslims. And imagine you have to do this all the time. Wow. But now they're all programmed. They come up to me, they're like this. I dictated what I wanted. That's how you do things. I'm not afraid. You don't like me? I don't care. Doesn't matter. My principle's too intact. And sometimes I make mistakes like everybody else. It's okay. But make a mistake with dignity, with honor, with respect. So you get to get all those things with what? One piece of cloth. SubhanAllah. Why wouldn't you want that? Why? Oh, we need to be like the social standard. And the one who can move the best has the best moves. When they come up with these crazy things, I just, man, subhanAllah. But from there, understand, if the dress language is there, you're already telling the world all these qualities. If your tongue doesn't have those qualities, it's a problem. So if you swear, guess what? You're contradicting everything. If you get angry, guess what? You're just underneath the microscope all the time. It holds you to those things. So if you want to take on greater responsibility, guess what? It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Because you know why? Responsibility actually triggers the same neural networks in your brain as cocaine, alcohol, and hallucinogens. Wow. It's a new drug and it's called responsibility. And it's legal. You can have as much crack as you want. Don't ever edit that and put it by itself. SubhanAllah. They can, I should, like once I said that, I said, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. But it's all good. But from there, responsibility, as that grows, you grow. Sisters, you have a responsibility. And brothers, we have a responsibility as well. I'm not telling you not to listen. It's up to you. No one can save you but you. No one at the end of the day. You can be with Kiki when you wake up in the grave or inshallah the Quran is next to you. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa alayhi wa
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hajj Sam, you don't have to worry about it. Lecture wasn't recorded. <laughs> um, we're actually going to be having a discussion. It's going to be held right out door, uh, outside the doors. Um, yeah, we have it actually set up out there. You sure? Okay. Bye bye. Just give me two minutes. Go ahead, guys. And sisters. Anybody who's got a quick question, we'll take a few here, then we'll extend the discussion outside. Go ahead. You had one? Embarrassed? Let's see who has courage. First question. Go ahead. Okay, so that's a great question. Now, let's say you are connected to music, right? And your heart is there. And every time you feel like you need to, that's, that's the way you cope with things. You feel bad, you turn it on. You feel good, you turn it on. Everything about you is about music. I've gotten people where they're like, you know what? I can't live without it. Oh my God, oh my God. Understand that some scientists have come out and said that it has something to do with oxytonin. Okay, oxytonin is the feel-good hormone. But understand, it's also what? The courtship hormone. It's the love hormone. So it hits these kinds of things. So why does it, even by yourself, if you're listening to music, you can do it. Why? Because it just right there, it just releases certain chemicals into your brain. And it sets that up dopamine and other things. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the circuitry of the brain, but all I'm saying to you is here. Now, let's say you become that kind of person. And I, I know a person, I think, 20 years now. I don't think they've listened to music. They used to, advocately. They used to, they used to go to clubs, everything. And bam, they stop. How does a person do that? Understand. Once you start belonging to the Quran, it automatically, re you start rejecting other things. Automatically. It's automatic. And un I swear to you, that person, when I talked to him and I studied this really well, you know what I said to him? I said, when you look at, when you go to a wedding, he's like, I don't go to weddings. I'm like, okay. So, wow. I, I never expected this from this person. Never. I never thought about that. And this person goes to me, I said, I said, how, why? Why don't you? He's like, when I go in there, I actually despise it. Really pay attention, please. He's like, I despise it. I said, but I used to love it. How? He's like, now when I go in there, I feel different. So think, same person, one heart. Not two hearts, one heart. It flipped and it connected properly. He's like, now I listen to the Quran. That's why I'm giving you this. This whole equation is because of him, literally. Because I studied it. Now from there, what happens? I gave you the methodology of how to do it. In terms of moving away from it. If, give yourself this, and take this test. Okay? Go against yourself for one week. Just one week. And literally, don't listen to music for one week. Just one week. And every time you want to turn on the music, turn on the Quran. And get the translated one. Just for one week. And see what happens to your heart. See what kind of moods happen. Study your circadian rhythms and what happens there. And when those hit, what happens? Because those control your moods. And if you do that, and you reconnect the heart to something different, which is the Qur'an, that's your antidote. Because the Qur'an brings what? Remembrance of Allah. And if you remember Allah constantly, this shifts. It shifts, I'm telling you. So the heart will flip the way you want it to flip. You can connect it to the music and keep listening and keep 
those circuits keep winning versus what? You connect it to the Quran and you start what? getting yourself there. So once you do that and you have them win the battle, and little by little you start training yourself, my God, what happens? I'm telling you, if I can give you something out of my own experience, music is like a silent drug. It's a silent drug. What happens? This is the way it works. Triggers the fantasy, number one. Next thing, you see the person in the club. Third thing, what's in the club? Alcohol. Fourth thing, women, men, wrong interactions. It's the, it's the gateway drug to move you across. And I'm telling you, they know how it works. Go to a club without music. What are they going to be drink, drinking tea? Or without alcohol? We're going to really drink tea. Now, what happens when you have intellectual conversations? You need the tea. Right or wrong? Look at the difference. It's again, but it's up to you. I'm not trying to, I swear to you, I'm not trying to convince you. At the end of the day, you want to go turn on Kiki and blast it down Ford Road? More power to you. I'm not going to judge you. And I see you bopping your head and just, it's all good. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Enjoy it. No problem. It's up to you. So nobody's telling you anything. At the end of the day, we're just discussing facts. That's all we're discussing. But we're not, we're being real with ourselves. What does the Quran want from us? We're not justifying it. It's not in the Quran. The hijab is not in the Quran. We, should, we can listen to it. We're not justifying things. We're just dealing with the facts. Now, it's up to you to choose. You want to hit the club tomorrow? Khayyid, more power to you. You have that tight shirt on, you're hitting the, the gym, it's all good. Do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, understand your soul's on the line. Don't lie to yourself. Don't. Don't. Don't be that person that's just like, I'll do it tomorrow. I just told you, don't do the things you don't want to become. So from there, those are the kind of things. Just connect there. For one week, do that. See what happens. Totally. That's a tricky one. <laughs> okay. So I, again, really think about these kinds of things. So people, the people ask these things. Okay, do you have halal things? There are certain things that our maraja say that are okay, they're permissible. Study those things. Stay within the parameters where you don't have a choice to have an opinion. I'm going to repeat that. There's a reason why we follow the religion. We don't dictate the religion. There's a reason, right? We have three things. Number one, become a mushtahid yourself, meaning a marja, which all of us are, by the way, because we give our own opinion. Number two, what? What's number two? Do precaution. You can literally do precaution. Good luck trying to live in this country and do, do precaution. Number three, what? What's number three? Anybody know? Anybody? Going once, twice. You can follow. You can follow. Thank you, sister. Those are the only, th those are the options. Is anybody in here a marja? Please come up here and take my spot. Okay? None of us are. So number two is what? Ihtiyat you can't do in this country. It's too hard. That means if you go and you have to pray Asr and you don't know the direction, you have to do all of them. All which way. It will literally become hell. Number three, you have to follow. What does that mean? Does that mean give your own opinion? I'm sorry. La, no, don't follow me. <laughs> I'll take you straight. You start astaghfirullah. I'm not going to say that either. But <laughs> you're filling the room gaps. I don't want to be responsible for you on a day of judgment. Oh, he told me to do that. La, I'm not going to tell him. I don't know him. <laughs> Let him be. Yawma yafurru al mar'u min akhi wa ummihi wa abi. Khalas, ahsan wa bani. So, on that level, just let it go. 
let these things go in terms of these things. Whatever there's a line that you're not sure about, take, take the precautionary factor. If you, if you don't know where, where the lines are, okay? And you feel like, okay, this is a beat. Because some people allow it. Some marja, again, look at your marja and follow. You believe in that marja, follow. Follow, stay within those lines. I said follow. Don't give the marja your opinion. And you become the marja. And you know who the marja is following? Who, who, where are they deducing from? Quran, hadith. There's two other things. We don't have to talk, discuss them. But let's say just there. Right? So they're deducing from those things. And the Prophet, they find the hadith that the Prophet says, you should put on the hijab at nine. Or you shouldn't listen to music. You come and you tell him, no, I know what the Prophet is saying. Come on. It's not affecting me. You just literally put yourself above the Prophet. Nizal alayk al And in your dream, you saw everything happen. And now you can dictate the law. Wow. If you didn't realize what you're doing. If you don't understand it, say, I just, I don't understand. Even my heart is connected to it. It's okay. Be real. Don't lie to yourself. I don't know. I feel good. I want to turn it on. Okay, no problem. But don't say it's not there. <laughs> it's, a, it's, like, it's like a person who puts their head in the sand thinking that it's, uh, you know those bills sometimes you get and they're so bad. You don't want to look at them. It's like you leave the bill on the table thinking it's going to go away. It's not going to go away. The Quran is not going away. <laughs> Many people have tried. It's not going away. It's not going anywhere. Don't challenge it. Don't. But for your question, ultimately, if you see things that make you feel it, so you're looking for a feeling. You see what I'm saying? So we're all after a feeling. At the end of the day, we want that emotion. And that's beautiful. It's a great thing. But ultimately, what do you do? If there are certain things that have two hearts within one body, don't mix them. It's not going to work. The equation you're going after, it's not going to happen. It's going to give you the right emotion, maybe what? Trinkle it over time. Momentary. You feel better, but it's, there's trickery in it too. You've got to be careful what you connect your heart to. You've got to be careful. And if you feel that, make your own judgment there. Because there's a lot of things based on our, our, our meaning the, the social standards, based on our, our, our religions connected to the social levels. So it's based on what people do as well. The religion is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's incredible. The way it deals with things is incredible. That's why it's been what? It's sent down to you. It's a program. Download it. Not just here. Also in here. You need this too. It's not just this, guys. Believe me, it's this. So if we're looking for feelings, we want to feel better, we want to do these things, I'm not telling you not to listen. I'm just telling you there's a better way. One way may take you not where you want to go. Is that good? Okay, you're welcome. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'll answer the first question first because I, I love that one. It's okay. Does the person, is the second person that you asked about, are they a good liar to themselves? Are they rationalizing? 
can I change the hijab now, maybe a hundred years from now? You know what? Tomorrow, khalas, everybody take off the hijab. We're all good. Can I change that? Or you know what? Stop praying. Khalas, you're good. Free pass, you're going straight to heaven. Would you follow me? Imagine right now, every one of you guys, I just give you a free pass. Khalas. Marja Wisam here. Don't repeat that one. Okay. I'm number one right here. Khalas. Follow me. I'm going to take you to heaven. A lot of you would look at me and say, something wrong with you. The reason why I'm saying that is do principles change? Let's answer your question. Principles do not change in time. They don't. They're the same. Who changes? People change. That's the difference. Some people choose to lie to themselves and rationalize their actions because they have to deal with the guilt. Because when I have to think about the prophet, music, and I should be lenient with myself, so what do I do? It's okay. That was the prophet's time. It's all right. It doesn't matter. That was a principle back when, back then. We can change the principle now. But study who set up the wedding between who? Imam Ali and Fatima al-Zahra. Study who set that up. I'm not going to tell you who. Study, research. Look back at who we are. Then come back and talk. Just that, tell that person that. Who set that up? With his own hands. Who? Study that. See. Then you won't have the audacity to even talk. Because you won't open your mouth. You can lie to yourself all day, no problem. I tell you, okay, go ahead. Prophet's time, no problem. Khalas. Do what you want. Again, whatever I've been telling you, it's up to you. No one's judging you. Everyone has to judge, by the way. You cannot escape it. You cannot escape judgment. The mind works on differentiation. But there's a difference in here. Some people judged with an angered heart. Some people judged with a merciful heart. Completely different. Different. The prophet had a merciful heart. And he set the rules. I'm sorry, not you. But the first thing I tell that person, you know what, I should follow you. You know what? I'm going to give up the religion. I'm going to give up the prophet. I'm going to follow you. And the whole world should follow you. Because you know better. Watch how they crack. So on that level. Your first question, repeat it again, please. I don't go to wedding, number one. So I, I, I don't care. doesn't matter to me. The person who can stand the ground is not when you're safe. When you need to stand your ground is not when you're safe. It's when you're tested. That's when principles. So a situation comes up, a wedding. Your brother, your, your sister's wedding, and they want music. Uh-oh. What are you going to do? The pressure is on. Or you don't want music and your parents do. Oh, oh, what are you going to do? These things happen all the time. Now, some of us do buckle. The situation is too strong. And I'm not telling you to really just go gun ho. You have to understand how to apply principle through wisdom. Okay? You have to understand how to apply it. Go ahead. Okay. Ex excellent. Okay, so really pay attention to what I'm going to say here, okay? Um... Okay, so I'm going to give you this equation that you really have to understand. And the main thing is this. 
you have to understand how a piece of information can be applied in different ways to a different situation. So I'm going to explain that. So the principle is one, application is one, many, and the situation is what? One. The situation doesn't repeat. It doesn't. So what does the situation really do? Situation is one. What does that mean? And it's never duplicated in time and space. So every situation is unique. Correct? Can we agree on that? Can we agree? Okay. So every situation is one situation. That means that you have to have the right principle that's applied to the situation. Can we agree there? That there's a situation that requires courage. Let's give an example. Someone comes in, and for the guys who's got some muscles here, mashallah, all you guys are buff. All right, so from there, watch, watch this. He's a man, someone attacks his mother. What is his requirement? He has to have the principle of what? Courage, correct? That's the principle being applied to what? The situation which is unique. It's one situation. Application of courage, correct? Now, what happens if he doesn't apply it? No, no, let's say he, he defends his mother and he gets beat up. That's even better in the eyes of Allah. But from there, imagine he steps back and he doesn't do that. What do we look at him as? You see how you, see the equation, how it spits out? A what? An answer. Or, let's say he defends his mother and he wins. What happens? What do you label him as? Hero or he's what? Brave. The situation spit out what? A conclusion. That's how it works. So now what happens there? If we do that properly, in terms of application, you get the right result. Watch how one principle can be applied, one principle, one principle of courage, can be applied in different ways to different situations. Watch this. Now, this person, one person, let's say I have to defend my mother, right? I use myself as an example. And I have to now to go, uh, to go towards what? Conflict. Because I have to defend her. I have to have courage, correct? Now, and now I do so, and I defend my mother. Aggression. Right? I have to be aggressive. Otherwise, what? I'm a coward. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, you are as brave as how much anger you can muster. So I need anger. Anger is good here. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to defend her. So now what happens? Let's apply it the other way. Let's say my brother comes up to me and he slaps me. See the difference? I have to have the courage to what? Pull back. I'm passive. Aggressive? Passive. I have to learn how to do that in situations that are unique. I have to have the right frequency to tap into. This is wisdom. When I apply knowledge through wisdom in the situation, what happens? I get the right result of bravery, kindness, respect. I get to earn these values. Every situation will split out, spit out at the end of the day a value. Every single situation, you will end up with a value. And now what happens? If you apply it properly, let's say I come up to my brother, let's say he's getting married. And I say to him, Habibi, Aini, I love you. Give him a kiss on his forehead. And there's nothing on the face of this earth that would stop me from being at this wedding except for one thing. And I'm sorry, you're not above him. And that's why you're disappointing Allah. I'm sorry. That's the only thing. And if you didn't have this, in my heart, I'm the happiest person for you and you know it. I don't have to tell you anything. I have to speak one word. You know what's in here. But at the end of the day, I'm sorry. I can't. 
and I give him another month, kiss on the forehead. It's just your application. And you can pull people towards you. My God, when you're tested and you stand with principle and your tongue is alive with what? What Allah wants. My God, what happens? Your character will shake the ground when you walk. I guarantee you. You become a different person. You will not care about what people think. You drop outcomes. You literally drop them. And it doesn't matter. Because who? I have tawakkul on who? Wa tawakkul Allah. Kafa billahi wakila. You will rely on Allah because you drop the outcome. Once you drop the outcome, tamanna wal maut in kuntum. Wish for death. Long for death if you are truthful. Who would wish for death? When Imam Ali salam says, if death was offered to buy it, you would buy it. In terms of buying more time. If you can buy death, you would actually buy it. So on that time, when you understand that, and I apply, I take the right principle, I apply it with the right frequency of passiveness and aggressiveness. And I know which side of the scale I'm on. And I have all the notches in between. This is the dial of wisdom. And I push that button and I apply properly and I get the right virtue. Every single virtue that is good is with Allah. Everyone that is bad is with you. Bottom line. That is incredible if you really just understand that equation I just gave you. And that is application and how you get yourself to the next level. We can take it now. So I hope that answers your question. Inshallah, we'll conclude here. And if there's any extra questions or anything you guys want to, I'll have a little, you know, other gathering that we can we can attend. Muhammad